In a total area of 9,250 square kilometers and with a population of 650,000, Cyprus is one of the oldest wine-producing countries. Based on archaeological evidence, we can conclude that grapevine cultivation began early in the 4th millennium BC. The worship of Dionysus proves how much the people of Cyprus loved wine. In days of old, the sole means of cultivation in Cyprus was the humble plowshare, drawn by donkeys, oxen or horses, animals one came across in practically every household. Have me pruned by two old men with white beards, have two young and newly tamed oxen plough me. Have young men walk around me and maidens trim me. Bring your jar close and let me fill it. Let me pay off your hard work. The actual planting of vines follows age-old traditions dating back to the time when the Cypriots decided to grow vines from the endemic wild plant. During the planting, which takes place in April and May, there are three significant roles. The handler of the scala, the tool that makes the hole in the ground, as well as the actual planter and the person arranging and watering the soil around it, are the protagonists of the planting process. At their beck and call is a whole army of assistants carrying water and saplings. Grape gathering in the more temperate regions begins at the end of August and ends in November for those regions at higher altitudes. Oh, August, were you to come twice a year. Even to this day, there are people in Cyprus, particularly in Paphos, who adhere to the traditional stomping of the grapes. I learned how to stomp grapes from my father. He also was a grape producer. After he got old and couldn't stomp the grapes, I would do it. I was young then. I inherited the foot press from my father-in-law. He had inherited it from his father-in-law. In this way, we kept the tradition of our grandfathers so as not to let it be lost. Nowadays, the youth has lost it all. The traditional dress, they lost respect for others. Despite technological development, many Cypriot producers continue to produce their own wine. The grapes are poured into a special basin, the press. A rotating rod crushes the grapes, which then fall into the pot, which incidentally has been cleaned from last year's residue. The grapes need to be constantly and continuously stirred with a wooden rod, lest their fermentation cause the pot to overflow. And while fermentation in the clay vessels continues, 
a wicker basket is used to separate the solid mass from the vessel's liquid content. Of particular interest is the wine commerce practiced in days of old by the Kirajides. He would come to see the wine and taste it. He would ask Pidias to open the one he liked and wanted to buy. Then they would start measuring. First of all, we would make a piece of wood with a hole in it. Like this one. It probably goes back to my grandfather's days. This way, we would take some wine from the pot and pour it in the glass. We would look at it and see if it were black or red. We would taste it and see if it tasted good before we opened the pot. In ancient times, thousands of visitors came to the island every year in order to worship the goddess Aphrodite in Paphos. During the festivities, they quenched their thirst with Nama, the sweet wine of the island, forerunner of Kumantaria, the oldest branded wine in the world. Cyprus wine was well known to foreigners. After the island was bought by the Knights Templar, the oldest local wine was renamed Kumandaria. This name was given to the wine manufactured at the large Kumanderi at Colossi, first ruled by the Knights Templar and then by the Knights of St. John. Since then, the Kumandaria region has been inescapably linked with this wine, whose method of production remains the same up to the present. It would not be an exaggeration to claim that the production process remains the same as the one described by Hesiod, 2,000 years before the Crusaders arrived, when Orion and Sirius are high in the sky and Io meets Arcturus, go forth and collect the grapes and take them home. Leave them out in the sun for 10 days and nights. Then cover them for five days and on the sixth day, press these gifts of Dionysus in big containers. Following fermentation, the wine is transferred into oak barrels, where some Kumantaria from previous years is added. There, it remains for a period not less than two years. It hasn't been long since the vines bore blossom. A new cycle of wine production begins. Soon, winter will come and the vineyards will once again resound to the voices of these Cypriot country folk. <laughs> Greetings to you, O grower, your vineyard having hoed. Your vines are up and spreading, their juice like honey sweet. Dig deep within your being as well, O warrior with arms of steel, so that your souls, the holy vine, may bear such bounteous fruit that even angels joyfully would spread their wings around it. Mm -hmm.